Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today I'll be talking to you guys about Ned Kelly. Now, this actually uh, has come to my attention from one of my old subscribers in Australia who actually asked me to actually talk about Ned Kelly since he was an Irish, or Irish Australian as you call it. His father being, from, well, kicked out of Ireland and, well, placed into, well, Australia since at this point in time it was a British colony. Now, in the time, though, this is pretty much one of Ned Kelly's most famous remarks about him, was that he was pretty much just like Billy the Kid. Well, I want to agree with that technically because of the fact that both him and Ned Kelly were pretty much outlaws, yes, and pretty much they ran gangs, but as well they also were in massive conflicts with the police, in which many people hired bush rangers to do so. Now, technically in Australia, bush ranger is a type of outlaw, same as I heard here in the United States, the term cattle wranglers is another term for an outlaw, who stole cattle, and so on. Now, pretty much they were also loved by the populace, I had to agree with that. But, here's the thing. Ned Kelly, I, when I actually see Ned Kelly, I think of him more as the same type of group that since he was he and his gang were pretty much armored up with fully ar armored suits of iron if you guys don't understand this much I should advise you guys this guy and his group actually manufactured impressive armor that could actually deflect bullets and which was all made of iron iron and metal so in other words pretty much the bullets of the day even still today couldn't get through it this was thick enough to be 12 gauge or 14 to 12 gauge and could still stop a bullet and it could even stop the bullet from a martini henry breech loading rifle now these guns were heavy duty firearms that could actually kill even a rhino with one shot and that's kind of terrifying coming to think of it but in truth though that kelly and his group actually manufactured these type of plate armor to well <laughs> well use against the police. And as well, if any of you guys have read Dam Redemption fans, you pretty much can see this armor in the game as pretty much a lot of you guys pretty much play it. But in truth though, Ned Kelly, when I as I see when I see him, I think of more of the North Carol California or the North Hollywood shootout of the bank robbery in nineteen ninety seven. It was actually stated that two armed men ended up trying to rob a Bank of America and they actually outnumber technically they may have been outnumbered by police but see the reasons I actually find him, this group and the Kelly gang the same is kind of easy to understand really they both made armor that they made by themselves they actually managed to outgun the police they managed to try and outthink the police and pretty much they always failed at doing so now these four reasons are doing so now the armor, for example, Ned Kelly made his from iron. Well, the gang group, they managed to manufacture their own type of armor. And this was uh, illegal. You can't buy this. You have to make this. And they made, somehow managed to cotton fiber the entire stuff. But the thing is, it didn't, there was a problem about it, which I'll get to later. But as well, another reason these two are kind of the same is because, as well as I stated, they managed to try and outthink the police. Pretty much the Kelly gang tried and, well, do many things. Unfortunately, it kind of led to their downfall. As well, the, well, gang in North, the group that uh, tried to do the robbery in North Hollywood, it stated that they, in the process, actually kind of got caught pretty much because of the fact they weren't looking for police and pretty much that's because they watched the movie Heat they thought they knew everything about well how to do a robbery so you can see the stupidity in that but now another part about the Ned Kelly gang actually being disidentical to the robbery gang is as well as I stated their overwhelming firepower they managed to get a lot more firepower and as well the Kelly gang got massive amounts of firepower from revolvers, carbines, rifles, all of which they stole out of the police, in which most of the time they couldn't get their hands on, in which only military can get their hands on these guns. Same thing goes for the robbery group in North Hollywood. They somehow managed to get their hands on semi-automatic weaponry and make it fully automatic, illegally. You can't do that, and it's kind of illegal, but they somehow managed to do it, mainly doing it with an M16, 
uh, Hetchnikov 91 and two AK-47s. And they somehow managed to outgun the police for hours on end. And as well, they both had a final shootout. This is the reason why I kind of find both of these groups the same, really. Now, it is stated, though, that Ned Kelly actually was in a major shootout with the police in his final shootout. He and his group actually became, uh, well, <laughs> they kind of relied too much on their armor. And in doing so, it exposed mostly every part of their body, but in doing so, they were also sleep-deprived and drunk. And it was even stated that in the process, the, the, at the end of Ned Kelly's, well, shootout, it was stated that the police shot at his legs, in which were the most exposed part, that never shot the armor. When it came to the uh, North, um, <clears throat> North Hollywood group, it was actually stated that they actually overcompensated with their armor. They relied on it too much and didn't realize that the armor could only stop 9mm. Anything above that, like say a 5.56 chamber round, can actually still go through it. Now the thing is though, this was impressive at the time, and still is, and which many people don't understand of how messed up this is, that this happened a couple of, like a two few decades ago, and today we don't remember it. The thing is though, it was probably the most terrifying thing for the people of California in North Hollywood in which, most of the time, Ned Kelly was even nicknamed the Scourge of Australia. In fact, he was one of the most famous bush rangers, but he was never to be the last. But the most famous part about him, though, was that he was always an outlaw. And pretty much of the fact, the most iconic thing about him was his plate armor. That armor is what was the most terrifying part about him, in which many cops actually feared. In fact, many constables were so terrified, it was even stated they ran away rather than get shot. But another thing as well, when he was in his early age, he was actually stated to have stolen a horse, beaten up a Chinese farmer, and arsonin, and so on. And the thing is, most of the time he got away with it. The same with the North Hollywood gang. They somehow got away with a lot of stuff at, a, at an early age, but when it came to their last days, it ended. Now, it is stated, though, the last dying words of Ned Kelly were the following, as such is life. Now, I can understand that. In truth, we can actually see in history books, because Ned Kelly was the type of person who was, well, not the most brightest, but technically the most clever at, well, fighting. And so, if he managed to actually defeat constables after constables, the only reason that he managed to get destroyed in the first place, or derailed from his train, I guess you might call it that, was because he was trying to derail a train and failed at it. This type of constable train was supposed to head for him, thing is though, he was trying to head it off and derail it. Problem is though, he allowed one of his, uh, I wanted to say victims, but one of his captives, to actually, well, leave the premises without his knowing, or technically he asked him if he could leave, and he did. That is probably what led to Ned Kelly's death in the first place, in which he was hanged. But the most impressive part as well, that the, well, the greatest part about it was, Ned Kelly and his group were actually feared throughout Australia. And it was even stated that many people in the parts of Australia actually loved and adored him, but as well feared him. We could see that as well in Billy the Kid. Or even in the James Gang, if you think about it. But the most also impressive part about it was also his head. Now, the reason I say his head was because of the fact when he was actually buried in an unmarked grave, it was stated that his bones were dug up and the skull was stolen from the museum. This is impressive by far. Someone stole his head and still has never been found. Many people in Australia are still trying to know where is the head and you guys might also ask, why did someone take it? Well, this is actually kind of memorabilia that people would actually end up taking. It's kind of like if we see during World War II, for example, you shoot a German soldier or a Japanese officer and take their sword, their weapon, their gun, or including when we see Bonnie and Clyde, for example. It was even stated that in Dallas, people actually rushed to actually grab, well, even 
buttons, hair clips, or even the hair and skin of the dead gangsters. Even with the James Gang and Billy the Kid himself when they put him on display. This is probably the most horrifying thing, but it was normal back then, but you get the point. But the same thing also happened in the North Hollywood shootout. And pretty much, though, it is pretty much the most terrifying part in history that we still, as I state, forget. As we do with most gangsters, ruffians, or as well, forgotten common. Now, it, you know, I, as I stated, Ned Kelly is an Irish-Australian, which is why I included him in the month of March for the Celtic history lessons. Now, pretty much, though, he will be the last edition for this uh, month of March until I have an all-Celtic month again in the coming next year. But as well as I state, guys, throughout the rest of the year, I will be getting to more uh, things, and that means it's a randomization of different things. It will be this and that from here to there. So that means, pretty much from as soon as we get into April, I will be covering different versions of history that pretty much we do not remember. Such as this and that. So, yeah, I don't want to tell you now, because I don't want to ruin it for you later. But as well, guys, pretty much, I will be leaving links of to of the type of shows I am subscribed to, such as the Simple History that actually helped me actually understand mostly more about Ned Kelly. And the first time I heard about Ned Kelly was actually when I was told in, I think, elementary about... This was actually hilarious when I was told that Ned Kelly was like the Billy the Kid of, of Australia. And I was actually told this when I was in elementary school when I was learning about Wild West type gangsters. But, eh, I never fully understood the difference between them. It's kind of, they are about the same, but as I stated, not the same. But as well, there is, if you guys want to learn more about Ned Kelly, I would put, I will put a link down below in the description about Ned Kelly. As well, I would also put a link down below about the shootout in North Carol California, or North Hollywood, as I keep stating, about the massive shootout in an old series called Shootout, which was pretty much my favorite type of series on the History Channel. But as well, guys, I will even... But as well, guys, a big shout-out to all my Australian subscribers, and pretty much also shout-out to the subscriber who gave me this uh, little bit of a comment from the last few videos on doing a video on Ned Kelly. I am also a subscriber to many Australians as well, such as Chad from Shadowversity, Medieval Review, and including Primitive Technology. I will be leaving links down below for those guys as well. Anyways, guys, hopefully you have a happy March, and as well, a happy year. Anyways guys, it's been Templar. Have a great day.